Uh, the community of Reeds used to be known as Coop Duga. Uh, we still use that word casually with each other. Uh, we said, I said to someone earlier today, there's a Coop Duga meeting tonight program. Um, that word just rolls off for the old school, but we sort of changed the name to Community Reads. It's the same thing. Um, we just wanted to uh, make sure that we got everybody together to read a book, a good book, and then have the opportunity to create incredible, beautiful artwork for the book, um, as well as uh, programs that will be coming up over the month of October. Um, I want to take a few minutes to thank a couple of really important people. Um, in this room tonight is the person whose brainchild this actually was many, many years ago. I was excited to see her show up tonight. Um, she's sitting in the back. Um, Mary Cobb, thank you so much for bringing this to us. Mary's idea to not only have a community book, but to bring art um, alive in our communities through literature. It's just one more way to um, really bring our community together. So thank you, Mary. Uh, standing right next to Mary is uh, Sherry Bosler, and she's been with this community for a really long time um, and has continued to move it forward over the years. So I really wanted to thank both of them. I got to this together myself. Um, I just have the pleasure to be the person standing up here. There is another committee of people in the room. They are one, two, three, then where are you? Uh, MK over here, Lynn in the back, Kim, Beth, who am I missing? Rhea. Me, yeah. Rhea. Yeah. Rhea, Rhea, Janet. Janet. Uh, this is a definite group effort. It's a big lift uh, to get between the food, the reception, the music. Thank you, Charles, for being here tonight. Uh, he's with us most years. In addition to the art show, I hope you have an opportunity to pick up our brochure that talks about all the things we'll be doing over the next month. Um, we will be having the author speak next week. She can't be here in person, uh, but she'll be on Zoom um, for a, a talk and a question and answer period. Her name is Shelby Van Pelt. This was her debut novel. By the time we got in touch with her, she was already like famous. Uh, so uh, it was really exciting that she was uh, willing and able to come and talk with us. Uh, the following week, we're going to have uh, someone come and talk to us about aging in the gorge. If you've read the book, you'll know that part of the book is about aging and, and what we do as we get older and the choices that we have to make. So Sharon Carter will be talking about um, aging in the gorge and services available to us. And we will also have the opportunity to have a little play. If any of you have the opportunity to see Ripcord when it was down in the Benjamin Theater a couple of years ago, we're going to be doing a few scenes from that play here as well. Uh, we will also, the following week, have somebody uh, zooming in from Alaska, a woman who was raised in Malise octopuses. Um, it is octopuses, uh, not octopi. I will tell the artists, if you use the word octopi on your card, it's the only editing we did. We corrected it to octopuses, uh, just because we're a literary nerd. Uh, we did that. Um, and then our final week um, will be showing the film uh, My Octopus Teacher. If you haven't seen it yet, it's a beautiful film. Um, the brochure is incorrect. It says we will be streaming all of these programs uh, or uh, Zooming them. All of them except the film. We don't have rights to uh, copyright rights to show the film outside of this room. In addition to that, we're not done. We've got a children's program coming up called uh, the Octopus Extravaganza, uh, which will be an afternoon of making octopuses, not octopi. I'm, I'm not quite sure what that's going to be. If one of my partners, how you will be doing that. Um, and then lastly, we brought in uh, tai Chi for seniors. We've called it Octopus Tai Chi. There will be four <laughs> sessions the last two weeks in October. Um, I hope you join. It's free. If you've never done Tai Chi, it'll be a, a way for you to get introduced to it. The teacher's in the room. <laughs> but I imagine that we will be exploring all of our arms and legs. <laughs> I also want to thank a friend of the library. I have the brochure in my hand. This is the uh, larger group that the uh, Community Reads Committee works with. Um, if you're not a friend of the library, you're interested, there's a lot of friends of the library in the room. Talk to somebody. Um, and we'll get you hooked up with the friends group. It's a wonderful group of people. And then lastly, I want to just say that uh, we ask everyone to take out, take the time to vote for your favorite piece of artwork. These little ballots are on the piano. We ask you to only vote once, even if it's your favorite piece of artwork in the entire world. Um, and we will be collecting ballots over the course of the month. At our last meeting in October, we will announce the, uh, the grand prize winner of the art show. <laughs> Anything else I'm supposed to say for all you people out there in TV land? Doing very well. Okay, well with that, I'd like to um, invite the artists 
Um, any of the artists who are here and are interested in speaking about their piece, letting us know what inspired them beyond the book, um, what it's made, whatever. Um, if you're interested, if you'd stand next to your piece right now, um, we'll have the opportunity to hear what you have to say. Look at y'all. Um, I'm Arby Cook, and this is Marcellus, and this is Sherry Bossler, but you know her. Um, I, I made I made Marcellus, well, not all of Marcellus, just one of his arms, because that was um, the whimsy part of him that I wanted to express. And I used um, some really ab aborigine fun fabric, and then Sherry did the um, sucker. So Sherry is a sucker lady. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. <laughs> I, th I, I think I'll stop there. <laughs> so, my name is Kimberly Hoppus, and I am very grateful to be involved with this beautiful uh, exhibit. Uh, I, I like to paint, but I get uh, inspired by the last Community Dreams event. That was wonderful. I was really, I always wanted to paint a marble mirrorlet, so that was great. And then um, for this book, this is not necessarily Marcellus, sorry, <laughs> but I, I just, I love marine life, and I wanted to represent. Um, and call attention to conservation in general, just you know the fact that there's a lot of overfishing and um, just the appreciation I have for octopuses. And my medium is basically watercolor. Someone had asked me, you know, about the, the suckers, and there's a really cool tool at uh, Toki Art if you haven't seen it. It's a um, it's a pen that's a masking fluid, and so I use that, and uh, that made it a lot easier with <laughs> watercolor. And um, that's really what I want to say. So. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm Beatrice Cap. I want to thank Janet Esley for inspiring me, encouraging me, believing me, gave me enough to say, you ought to enter this. And so I did my best to do that. And here it is. And my inspiration besides the book is I, I'm really fascinated by creatures who are smarter and have higher consciousness than human beings. And I believe cephalopods are a part of that group and I'm just trying to understand more about that and, and appreciate the book. And I'm thrilled to see how many different ways of relating to this book are expressed here on these walls. And that to me is, uh, I don't know what, it, unites us all in a special way, I think, and spreads through the community, and I really thank the community needed this opportunity, so thank you so much. So this remarkably bright painting <laughs> actually has a lot more to do with this book than the title suggests, which in the title is Octopus Dream. Um, because underneath the final layer of paint that you see is about 24 years of other paint. And if you look closely at the surface of the paint, you'll see, you can see how tortured it is. <laughs> um, because there was lots of other things in this painting at one time or another. Um, there, the boat and the fox and a person were in here in 1996 um, when I first painted this. <laughs> Eventually, the person climbed off the, the, the seat into the bottom of the boat, and a cat jumped in. <laughs> and I was still having lots and lots of problems with this painting, which I usually do paintings that are um, complementary color schemes. You'll notice a lot of orange and blue in the room. Um, and I had this orange and blue painting, and I could not resolve the energies of the colors until this purple octopus climbed in. <laughs> and um, I had read the book, um, so I, you know. I know that's why this purple octopus climb is very great. And I do have a picture of the what its first permutation looked like, but we don't have to ask. <laughs> Can I ask you to talk about your other piece as well? Or yeah, sure. Th this 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 um this mid mid octopus. 
Puss seems self-explanatory for a group that called itself the Nitwits. This captures nitwitting um, quite a bit. Um, it's a collaborative piece with my niece, who is the world's master of knitting acrylic scarves. <laughs> and um, she has knit so many of them that she's running out of relatives and friends who will take them. <laughs> Um, so I am promoting the concept of scarfagami, which is the art of knitting, of rolling scarves into shapes for things. And this is one of our efforts. This is my um, collage, and I'm, I'm a mosaic artist, and I thought, oh, I'll do an octopus. And I go, no, that didn't work out. That just got really complicated. <laughs> And I started exploring with movement of water, and I started, oh, I've got the bracelet I got. And that also kind of started when I broke a little glass that I'd had for years. I got married at Snoqualmie Falls Lodge in Snoqualmie, Washington. And I was like, oh, I broke this glass. And, and so I thought, I'll oh, make a mosaic. So I, I stuck it in here, and these came from the beach. And this, these are just things I've collected over the years. And, and I thought, I don't know how this relates. It was gave up on the octopus and I kind of started thinking about you know the story and how all these parts went together and memories and people and how it all sort of blends into one and, and that maybe it's a stretch, but that's kind of what I came up with is, is a collection of stuff. And I showed it to a professional mosaic person, and she went, ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> and it means a lot to me. It doesn't mean a lot maybe to everybody else, but I thought that was kind of interesting. So um, there it is. It's, yeah. OK, I, I don't really associate with the word artist. I don't typically think of art. Um, every once in a while, I pop out like a kitschy little acrylic piece. So for me, this was an act in bravery to try something new um, and to submit it. I hear pieces are eye catching and I feel like there's no rules for you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I love it. It's amazing. So um, with that no rules rule, um, my friend Mindy and I, her pieces down there, uh, made an art pack to go ahead and submit uh, pieces together. And we held each other accountable to make sure it would happen. Awesome. And she read the book and she was like, oh my gosh, what a, what a sweet story. I don't know that I can eat octopus again. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I went and got an octopus tentacle from the store. And <laughs> completely different, uh, yeah, <laughs> approach after that. So I actually cut the um, suction cups off, dried them, and processed them a bit, and I hand stamped um, my own tentacle, which was extremely hard. They're very muscular. They don't bend easily. I thought I could just kind of wave it out, and that wasn't the case. This took me a really long time to stamp out. Um, and I decided to try and put it together into a shape that would come out of the uh, frame when I decided to give it a little mouth at the end. It needed to be a little weird. Um, so that was my experimental piece, and this is my safety piece, which was me doing some micro um, art. I don't ever work with watercolor, um, so I, it was a good learning experience. There's some micro things in there, like these kind of shoes, like house key. You have to kind of look for them, um, and Marcella's transitioning. Uh, not literally from one place to the other, the yellow bucket in which she's released from. Uh, yeah, so it was a good practice for me. Thank you for having me. So this is my felted octopus, and uh, Katie and I were sitting in the lobby, and she had a book, and it was like the day that school got out, and she was like, "Look." And the community is reading a book and doing an art project, and I thought, I want to do that. <laughs> and as a mom and an artist who wasn't really finishing a lot of pieces beyond making lunches and drawing pictures <laughs> and doing things like that, this felt like a really beautiful combination of 
just the love and the generosity I have felt here in the library, the community and just the sweetness of this place and the fact that they were inviting anyone to submit an art project felt really safe and sweet. And then I read the book and that just continued. The book just felt like it had so much heart and being invited to read a novel and finish it and have it be something that's just sweet was a lovely experience. And then to be able to kind of manifest this felt and octopus. And I've been playing around with felt and it's really friendly and not hard to clean up and you can kind of drop it when you need to and come back to it, unlike paint and other mediums that I've used. So this is what happened. And I uh, thought it was pretty funny that it began to be a little bit of insult. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a really good time with it. I found things like this is some little pride that my daughter left in my car and I was vacuuming the car and there it was. And I thought, oh, I'll stick a cap on this. That would be perfect. And I found this while walking and added some sculpting. My son was making noodles. I was like, oh, those are heart bounds. <laughs> so I really just kind of felt with my life and my hair and my cat's hair. <laughs> And it's just, it's just been a beautiful, generous, sweet experience, including the fact that I hadn't loved this, but I felt safe bringing it here and hanging it up anyway. And so I kind of love that part of it too. This is mine right here, and um, I have a friend that's a marine biologist, and she sends me pictures of uh, different creatures she sees in tide pools. And so I started putting this together, and she told me that those nudibranchs, which are these little guys right here, they don't belong together because they don't live in the same area. One of them lives on the Oregon coast, and one of them lives in Hawaii. So I thought, well, in an aquarium, that's okay, right? So I just put a bunch of different critters together, and I, I loved his attitude about getting out and eating things. I just thought that was just a really, I don't know, it's kind of like everybody gets up in the middle of the night and goes out to the kitchen, you know? Well, Marcellus got out of, his, out of his aquarium and went out and got food, but he only got... He didn't take everything at once, and I had to put in something that he liked to eat, which are scallops, and those are scallops, these little yellow pieces right here. So um, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, when I picked up the book and read that I was going to be learning about an octopus, I was not real thrilled. <laughs> but I love the book. I love the story behind it. Um, and this is colored pencil on drafting film. I um, am part of Ignite membership, which is uh, Bonnie Snowden, who is an artist in England. So I follow her and learn all kinds of pencil techniques. And um, anyway, I just decided that I would try it out. And this is Marcellus, happy to be back in the sea at the end. That I'm a big animal person and that, that touched me. <laughs> so, thank you. Um, I'm Carmen Caps, and this is mine. And then I have two more over here. Randall can show you the, my two that are over there. One of the colors right there. And um, the fact that I have three represents my enthusiasm for this whole project um, because I um, just learned to watercolor paint for the first time four years ago as a retiree and um, I've been painting, painting, painting. I probably have hundreds in our dining room. Our dining room table is my studio and where I love that. Um, but my friend Mary Kay, who's on the committee here, told me about this project and invited me to participate. And I was quite flattered by that, very flattered by that, and was excited by the idea because up until this point, almost all my paintings are looking at someone else's work and trying to reproduce that or 
now I needed to come up with my own ideas and composition and all that myself. So when I read the book, I was making a list of possible ideas of things I might try to think. And so I did this first. Thought, oh, I kind of like that, but I'm going to try some other things. So I did two more, thinking while I decide what to enter. And in the end, it was like, why not put them all in? So, <laughs> you should switch with your other pieces. so Randall, can you point to my two over here? They're all watercolor. Oh, those two. Okay, yeah, that's all I know how to do, and it's all I've ever done. And I've been doing it for four years now. So, yay. Thank you, Randall. I'm Donna Irwin. And I'm a picture framer in Trapwell at Plum River Gallery in Trapwell. And so I don't usually do art, but I frame a lot of various kinds of art. And so this was kind of my opportunity to get to do a painting. And um, I think this whole idea of a community reading a book is fabulous. It brings the whole community together and it's great for these smaller communities like this. Um, so I was part of the very first one, and it happened to be a book that I had just gotten done reading. So that was the Edward S. Curtis um, book. Um, so I still get emailed about it. So I entered this time, and this piece is mixed media. There's alcohol ink and uh, marker and colored pencil and watercolor. And so I was just playing. <laughs> so um, I've had the opportunity to dive, scuba dive, basically all over the world. There's a picture um, of me with an octopus on my arm. It happens to be off the coast of Greece. But I have found octopus are just amazing underwater. They will, if you slow down, if you slow down, that's that's the key. They'll come up and they'll crawl up your arm, and next thing you know, they're, they're like, uh, moving these tentacles so that you can see. I've had them sit on my shoulder for eight, ten minutes, just feeling right. And you have to be very calm, but it's a wonderful thing. The most one of the most spectacular things I ever saw was two cuttlefish, which are actually in the family, they're not an octopus, they're more like a squid, um, which I think they were mating because they were coming together and all of a sudden it was just this starburst. And so the beautiful thing about these creatures is that they change texture, they change shape, they change color. And as an artist, you go, well, that's really hard to capture because you know, a horse has a tail and it's the same shape all the time. And these guys are never the same shape or the same color. So when I thought about doing this, I painted the picture, it's an acrylic, and then I, I wanted to get that texture. So I beaded that piece with, that took a long time actually, to get all those little beads in place. But then what do you do with this awkward piece of art? So I made it into something that, the way we would see it. So I put it onto a tray, and then filled the tray with resin because this is how most of the sea octopus is through glass. And that becomes something that's functional and something we can use. But I will say, and I'm going to ask, please don't eat calamari. <laughs> <laughs> They're just so beautiful and so wonderful underwater that um, it would be nice if I had more of them on this planet. Thank you. Thank you. The Hood River Art Club uh, is functioning throughout uh, September through into June. And uh, then they do fine air stuff for the summer. But we meet every Thursday from 10 to 1 over at the Fish House, which is a food bank over off of Tucker Road in the river. And so you're all artists. So if you would like to join us at any time, please feel free. It's no cost. Just bring your stuff, talk to us, and have fun painting. And the Hood River Art Club will have the gallery next May. Uh, they have asked to do the wildflowers again. So uh, we're hoping that that will, did you know that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll see a lot of their pieces then. So that's, that's exciting.
Uh, uh, the piece that I did, I found, uh, I portrayed the lady and the octopus, but the idea behind it is the idea of a helping hand. There was so much parts, so many parts from the book that went into that without talking about these two people, these two human beings, uh, octopus being able to communicate. Uh, throughout the book, there was a lot of different types of communication. And so I figured a helping hand would be the way to go. Yeah. The last piece I want to point out is this piece here. This was brought to us uh, from the high school. Um, I believe the art teacher there is Kelsey Lemon. Did I have that correct? Yes, yes. Kelsey Lemon. Um, my understanding is what uh, Kelsey did, she didn't have the opportunity to have her students read the entire book because school just started. But she had her art students uh, read the chapters where Marcellus was speaking and then ask them to do a piece related to that. And so this is this beautiful piece that came to us. 19 different uh, students worked on it. And I just love that we're able to bring in the young artists and the younger readers into um, our community read, because really it, it's all about getting everybody involved, uh, talking with each other and learning and spending time enjoying life together. So if anyone was part of this and you're in this room, you don't want to say, yeah. that's fine, but thank you for that. Um, Talker, and there's a few things I forgot to mention. I'd like to point out the photograph on the back wall. Uh, this is a photograph of our dear friend Pete. Uh, she uh, helped uh, keep Community Reads Coop Duda going over the years by purchasing the books for us uh, many years, all but one, uh, while she was still alive. And I really want to recognize Pete for that. Her children have decided that they will continue to help us. Uh, with the books by bringing uh, fairly hefty donations to the community reads every year so that we can continue to do this. There are a few sponsors that I'd like to thank, uh, the Harkin Writers, the Cops, and the Bluestone uh, Men's Group. Uh, some of you may be here. Uh, this is a men's book group that has donated uh, money towards us, and they just agreed, some of the members of the Bluestone Men's Group have agreed to read with us, for us, to help us find books because our committee is all women. We're looking for another perspective. Um, and if you are yourself are interested in joining the committee and reading along with us and helping us pick our book, uh, we have we probably next week we'll start talking in seriousness about what we're going to be looking for for next year. Um, anything else I forgot to mention? Okay, you Sherry, you <laughs> Okay, in that case, I'm just going to say thank you to everyone for being here. Thank you, Charles, for bringing us music. Thank you, artists, for bringing us your feelings, emotions, and thoughts. Thank you, friends, for coming. Friends, capital F, friends of the White Sound and Valley Community Library, and friends with the lowercase f, those of you we just want to spend time with. Um, we'll be here for another probably 45 minutes or so. Please enjoy the refreshments, enjoy each other. And don't forget to vote for your favorite piece. Um, it's on the piano. It will be there all along. Thank you. Thank you.